Neo Power Swap versus Tesla Supercharging, the ultimate EV showdown. Welcome back to Studio Invest. I'm Joy, and in today's video, I'm going to break down the differences between Neo battery swapping and Tesla supercharging. But before we get started, make sure to gently touch that like button and subscribe for more similar videos and to stay updated on the industry. How could I forget? Of course, ring that bell icon so you stay updated on the industries of the future. First, I'll give you the short and sweet answer. Then we'll take a deep dive for those of you who want the nitty gritty details about how these services will impact each company's future growth. If that sounds interesting, keep watching. One of the unique selling points of owning an electric vehicle over a gas-powered one is the lower fueling costs. An EV owner can just charge his car overnight at home or use one of the many stations in the charging network while he's on the road. I mean, who enjoys going to the gas station? It's often crowded, noisy, and stinks of noxious fumes. But one major pain point that electric vehicle owners still have to deal with is that it takes much longer time to refuel an EV than it does a gasoline vehicle. Until recently, that is. While Tesla continues to expand its supercharger network rapidly, their overseas competitor, NIO, has gone full speed in another direction. Instead of pouring the majority of their energy into covering all of China with their charging networks, they chose to rely on a mixture of their own and third-party charging stations. And it's not because they couldn't deploy chargers at scale all by themselves. It's because they're going all in on battery swapping. So EV owners who need more range while they're on the road might find themselves having to choose between these two options now. Which is the cheapest and which is the easiest to use? Let's compare these two vehicle powering services and when it makes more sense to use one over the other. So how does it really look like? Well, for Tesla, it's more suited for short distances such as commute and the power swap probably more long distance like long road trips. But some argue that when you're on a long road trip with a Tesla, you'll be stopping at different food places anyways. And by using the superchargers, you'll be covered along the way for eight, nine hours anyways. Well, you might not always find all these power swap stations. What are you gonna do then? So there are pros and cons and it really depends. When it comes to the cost, for Neo battery packs, $142 per month for 670 kilowatt hour pack swaps. And Tesla, it's $0.25 per kilowatt. Tesla Model S can be purchased in long range and performance versions both with a battery of 100 kilowatt hours. When it comes to speed, which is essential for how fast and how long you have to stay at a place, for Neo battery swaps, it only takes three to five minutes and you're done, you're on your way. While it's a little bit slower for the superchargers, around 30 to 60 minutes. But then again, if you're gonna eat at a Burger King or any fast food place, that's all right anyways. When it comes to convenience, the battery packs have done for you services. They do it for you. Well, for Tesla, you have to plug in the stuff yourself. When it comes to availability, the battery swaps are only in China for now, while Tesla is already expanding worldwide with their super stations. When it comes to longevity, for NIO, it's limitless charging because you just sweep up off the battery packs and you don't have to worry about that. Well, Teslas have a limited battery lifespan because they can run out. As you can see here, each option has its advantages and disadvantages. Now, charging is the default option for EVs. And while battery swapping doesn't make sense in every case, it does benefit electric vehicles owners in the following ways. Swapping is much faster than charging. Where the operation has been demonstrated to take anywhere from one and a half, one and a half to five minutes compared to 30 to 60 minutes for a full charge of Tesla. Similar to charging stations, 
If there are enough battery swap stations near you, you'll never have to worry about running out of range. You don't even have to step out of your car and manually perform the service. Not owning the battery itself means that you transfer all the maintenance and repair costs over to the battery provider, which is a huge plus for new owners. Tesla cars bought before 2070 got to enjoy supercharging for free, but models sold after that don't get the same perks. Even though you also have to pay for battery swaps, you save on home electricity fees. They subsidize the cost of electric vehicles. The battery is one of the most expensive components in an electric vehicle. So having a couple of thousand dollars written off the vehicle price could spell the difference between an electrical vehicle or yet another gasoline power vehicle. Eh. Battery swap stations make even more sense in crowded cities. Shenzhen, Shanghai, Beijing since they take less space than parking lots filled with 30 to 60 superchargers. So now that you've gotten a quick overview of these two vehicle powering methods, we'll dive even deeper into how their features differ, the use cases for each, and which will be the dominant method for powering EVs. To start things off, let's go back in time and understand what prompted the need for battery swapping to be developed in the first place. My car is out of battery! What should we do? Maybe I can charge it, but it takes too long time. I, I don't have time for that. Does anybody have a solution? You can swap it. Swap it? Oh, that only took three seconds and my car is completely recharged. According to Oxford Dictionary, range anxiety is Worry on the part of a person driving an electric car that the battery will run out of power before the destination is reached. It also mentioned that range anxiety is the biggest hurdle to achieving mass market adoption of all electric vehicles. No one wants to fork over $20,000 or even $100,000 for an electric vehicle only to accidentally end up stranded in a remote location with no nearby charging stations. So, Three main strategies have been developed in response to this commercial bottleneck. First and foremost, and the most obvious one, the ongoing development of higher capacity batteries. Second, EV companies and their local governments have been building electric charging stations nationwide. And finally, battery swapping as an alternative to charging altogether. What is battery swapping? Battery swapping is the removal of an electric vehicle's discharged battery and replacing it with a fully charged one. This eliminates the standard issue of having to wait for your vehicle's battery to finish charging. Each battery swap station has different degrees of automation, but the survey itself consists of the following three steps. One, drive the car onto a platform with a removable floor. Two, unscrew the, and remove the car's battery. And lastly, place the new battery inside and screw it in place. Easy, right? Three to five minutes. Sounds simple enough. If you're looking to invest in the future of EV market, power swapping seems to have huge potential. Luckily, we've got you guys covered. Click on the link below to get eToro, a broker where you can invest in any company like NEO without paying any commissions at all. It's quite a sweet deal if you ask me. Stay with me as we dig deeper into this groundbreaking technology. The world's first battery swap station. Battery swapping is not a new invention. On the contrary, this technique has existed for over a hundred years. It just wasn't feasible for anything but large electric vehicles like forklifts, tractors, and buses up to the early 2000s. Better Place was the first company to open a commercial battery swap station in 2011 which operated in Israel and Denmark. Unfortunately, their entire business model relied on the French car company Renault's, Renault Fluence ZE, the only electric car back then that could switch batteries. Needless to say, Better Place went bankrupt, blowing just shy of a billion dollars single-handedly trying to develop charging and swapping infrastructure. I declare Bankruptcy! But to raise that much venture capital, Better Place had to at least have a compelling business model, right? 
The business of battery swapping as groundbreaking as battery swapping is, the underlying concept is much more similar to gas refueling than battery charging is, making the shift to an electric vehicle more compelling. With battery charging, you are given an energy supply with a limited lifespan, typically an 8-year warranty. Now, imagine a world where a brand new vehicle's price tag also factored in the cost of 8 years worth of gasoline. Sounds crazy, right? That would increase the barrier to owning a vehicle by thousands of dollars. Well, the same thing counts for electric vehicles. Battery swapping allows electric vehicle owners to pay more for range whenever they don't have much left or need more than their usual for their trip. This business model is a shining example of having your cake and eating it too. It's no wonder Tesla tried their hand at it even though it's debated among the EV community whether Tesla gave it a fair shot or at all. In just two short years after Battery Play's bankruptcy, Tesla announced a battery swap station of their own and designed the Model S with fast battery swapping in mind. A side benefit of this design is that it allowed vehicles to be assembled faster. But as you'll read later, Tesla made a last minute design decision that doomed their battery swapping service from the start. So, why did Tesla end up abandoning this initiative? Is Tesla battery swapping dead or delayed? In 2013, Tesla announced that they were going to support battery pack swaps at their charging stations and held a demonstration that showed a Model S battery getting swapped in about 90 seconds. That's faster than Neo. That's around half the time it takes to refill an empty gasoline fuel tank. Tesla deployed their first swap station off Interstate 5 in California, targeting Model S owners who regularly made the drive from San Francisco to Los Angeles. The service was priced at the same cost at 15 US gallons in June 2013 prices, which is in the neighborhood of uh, 60 to 80 dollars. Tesla's battery swapping operations never lived up to its potential though, mainly due to two reasons. The battery swap time wasn't as fast as promised, due to a last minute decision to add a new titanium shield on the bottom of the Model S. The, this increased their swap time from 90 seconds to over triple that. On top of that, the service wasn't fully automated, requiring humans to do the bulk of the work. Tesla also didn't disclose the full truth of how their battery swapping model works. Many of their pilot program users were surprised to hear that the new battery they got had to be returned on their way back home. It could be argued that this defeats the whole purpose of battery swapping. These blunders have even led some to speculate that Tesla only offered battery swapping as a scheme to earn nearly $300 million in zero emission vehicle credits. Damn, that's a lot. This is what Elon Musk had to say about Tesla's battery swap pilot program at 2015 shareholder meeting. We have basically the LA to San Francisco pack swap capability in place. And I believe all Model S owners in California area have been invited at this point to try it out. And what we're seeing is a very low take rate for the pack swap station. So we did an initial round of invitations where we did basically like 200 invitations. And I think there were a total of four or five people that wanted to do that. And they all did it just once. So like, okay, clearly it's not very popular. And then we said, okay, let's expand that invitation to all customers. But I would expect that all customers behave roughly like that initial sample group. We built the pack swap into the car because we weren't sure if people would want to choose the pack swap or not. We thought people would prefer supercharging, but we weren't sure. So that's why we built the pack swap capability in. And you know, based on what we're seeing here, it's unlikely to be something that's worth expanding in the future unless something changes. So there you have it, straight from the boss himself. Tesla is no longer interested in supporting battery swaps, unless something changes in the competitive landscape. Tesla meets Neo Power Swaps. Neo Power Swap has realized the true potential of battery swapping, claiming to have completed nearly a million battery swaps not only did they find a way to scale this technology, but they also created a whole new business model around it. The battery as a service, BAAS. Not BAS, BAAS, subscription model. In August 2020, 
Neo launched a battery subscription service that slashed $10,000 off their electric vehicle cost. All this and a 70 kilowatt hour battery pack for just $149 a month. That's a good bargain, considering the premium market they operate in. Unlike Tesla, which requires their users to return the newly swapped batteries on their way back home, Neo lets you keep the new battery until you decide to exchange it for yet a newer one. Leading the way in establishing China's electric vehicle battery swapping standard, Neo is making it easier for other car companies to develop their own battery swapping services in the future. Neo has already developed battery swap stations along China's G4 Expressway and has scaled that up over 150 stations so far, though their previous goal was 1,000 stations by 2020. Final verdict. Battery swapping versus battery charging. It seems that battery swapping offers more advantages than charging, but only when it's executed right. That means largely automated and available nationwide. If other EV companies can follow suit, we suspect that battery swapping will win in the long term. That being said, there are pros and cons to each vehicle powering method. So here are some simple criteria to help you decide which one is best for you. It's better to use battery charging when you either live in or are driving to a location with a high density of Tesla supercharging stations. You might have time to kill, you got burgers to eat, you have lunch break. Depending on how many EV owners are in your area, you might have to wait for a charger to free up. Battery swap stations are not within driving distance or even available in your country. You're only stuck with superchargers. On the other hand, it's better to use battery swapping stations when it's available in your country, which is only at China in the moment. You want to be on the cutting edge of EV technology, or you want to try out a higher capacity battery, since Neo makes them possible to rent them. Or you're in a big hurry to reach your far away destination with short stops. So that's it for today's video. Hopefully you learned something new about powering electric vehicles. Which EV power earthing methods do you think will dominate the market and why? Comment down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more in-depth electric vehicle content just like this one. I'll see you soon.